Hi guys, this one is going to be nothing at all to do with the charts. This is just to clarify some points on the commitment of traders report COT. So this is something that we teach within Discord. This is something that we use quite a lot. We've actually got some custom tools um, and even a bot now recently built on this particular point. So I just wanted to highlight what it is, you know, where it's useful, what the pros, what the cons actually are. So what I'll do is I'll go through, first of all, the commitment of traders is basically a US based uh, re report of forms. And rather than going into too much of the technical side of it, it basically shows the large flow of institutional money. So pension funds, hedge funds, mutual funds, uh, large cap kind of speculative traders, so on, so on. So it's actually useful. This report comes out once a week. It's a Friday night for me um, in the UK slash France. Um, but, but ultimately, it's Friday afternoon being out in the US. So what it does is it shows information on the positions held throughout the previous week. So although it is lagging, it will show positions of stock indices, um, commodities, currencies, and more recently, even crypto. So what you can do is you can use this data to analyze what the large institutional players are doing. So ultimately what you have is the, uh, I suppose the opportunity to look at things like uh, trend continuation, uh, trend reversals, and ultimately this then increasing the odds. So for example, when you understand that the large kind of cap players are actually taking um, you know, short selling, for example, you see some kind of in increase in the selling side, you can actually look at this and say, okay, who are they selling to? And therefore, you're looking at the report practically as a contrarian overall. And it's all about just increasing your odds. If you know what the big boys are doing, you're more likely to be on the winning side more often than not. Okay, so that ultimately is how you start it. That's how you see it. Now, what I'll do is I'll drill in a little bit further. So first things first, you can actually come across to the website which is the commitment of traders website the cftc commodities futures trading commission and in raw form you'd actually scroll down for this information you'd scroll down to this level now depending on what instrument you're trading let's look at predominantly the financials just for the sake of this example so i'm going to click on this little red here and hover over and you actually get quite a daunting report. There's a lot of information. There's just so much text and it can really be scary when you first see this. But what you're actually looking for is only a very small amount of data. So you'll see, if I can highlight this, you'll see at the top here, you'll have the instrument itself. So this is actually showing the Canadian dollar. Then we come into the Swiss franc. Then we come down, we've got the British pound and you can scroll down, you can see the size of this there's plenty of information to be found in this so let's assume we're looking at something like bitcoin let's go up and bitcoin is towards the bottom we've also got the dollar index so what we're going to do is we're going to look first of all at bitcoin so you can see here we've got bitcoin now in the grand scheme of things there's only a little bit of information that we're looking for in terms of the dealer and the intermediary it's kind of too small in terms of worrying about and that's not what the big money, the large cap, the institutional traders are. So what we're actually focused on is the asset managers, which is the institutional here. And you'll actually see the leverage fund. So it's this in every column all the way through. Okay. Now, I'm not really bothered about other reportables and the non-reportables. Again, not really enough to worry about. You've actually got the asset managers and the leverage funds. They are the two, I suppose, nuggets, if you will. Now. In this information, what you're able to see is the longs and shorts positions, as well as ultimately the change from the previous week. So you'll see here the change from the previous week. Now, personally, I ignore the rest of the information. I'm only interested to see what the large cap players are doing. So we've got 559 positions long. This is actually the equivalent of five Bitcoins. So just you know, multiply that. And therefore, we've got 
an image, I guess, a, a caption of what the reportable institutes in the US are doing. So although it's not the overall marketplace, it's actually a very decent sample size for what we're actually trying to take from this level of information. So what we can see is that the asset managers have 559 positions. We've actually got 413, which gives us a net positive in terms of asset managers. Now, when we're looking at asset managers, the way I like to describe this is you have to think of them almost as a 200 moving average, right? It's a long term. These guys ultimately, they deploy strategies that are more buy and hold for the long term. So they're very bullish in their nature. They are longer term traders and they are things that will be you know, one year, three year, five year plans, even further than that. So you just have to have a feel for if something is on the short side, then clearly there's a lack of interest at the moment. If something is long, it's how long and how long is that trend? So this is where you can use it for the trend following. You can use it obviously for reversals, but I think in terms of asset managers, you really need to think of it more as the bias rather than the short term in out, in out, in out, and especially not for day trading. This is, you know, I mean, the report itself is per week. So ultimately this is a longer, much longer term strategy and the asset managers are, you know, years at a time rather than days or weeks. So the asset managers include things like the pension funds, mutual funds, I suppose professional money managers, if you will. And like I said, with a longer term bullish view overall, you tend to find that these strategies are more buy and hold. So you then have the leverage funds, which is probably the equivalent of a 50 moving average for me. This is again how I would look at this on a chart. And although it's not as easy as saying, oh, it's a 50 day or it's, it's, it's just look, just rule of thumb, you know, kind of finger in the air. This is what I'm looking at. It's 200 for the asset managers and a 50. So if you get a, a you know, a 50 crossover 200, you know, you, you kind of know the rules. So for me, looking at this at the moment, what we have in terms of Bitcoin as of September 28th, we currently have open interest at 1,338 long positions. And we've actually got a leverage fund short position at 4956. Now, the way that I would interpret this data is that right now, we've got an awful lot more open interest to the short side, even in the shorter time frame, means that these guys are probably still selling off or ultimately taking profits for the big change overall. So I think the fact that we've got now a total change to the long side at minus 633, I'd expect a drop in the shorter term for this to actually happen. The longer term play would probably be bullish because there's a bullish sentiment on the asset manager side, but shorter term, I'd be anticipating a drop. There's 1,338 to the long, nearly 5,000 to the short, and therefore the sentiment on this side is actually more short than long. You then have another way of seeing this is another decent website, which is Tradingster. And these guys represent the similar data, but I suppose in a little bit more visually pleasing um, way of seeing the same thing. So bloody adverts. So what you'll actually see here is you've got the same information and it's just in a little bit more I suppose, visually please inform. Um, there's a little bit more information. And again, come down, you've got some charts. This is very, you know, intense and so on and so on. But, you know, it's easy enough to read when you know what it is you're looking for. So what we've actually gone and done as part of our Discord server is we've actually added a little tool, this tool here. Um, and this tool is a currently in Excel. You'd actually read this right to the left. And the idea is that throughout the year, we get in the his historic data that will allow us then to plot this on a, again, visually pleasing graph that allows us to see the change along the bottom and then ultimately the overall move. Now, I can scroll through this and look, this is currently Australian dollar. I can scroll down to the bottom and come across and find the Bitcoin situation. 
um, and then the chart will obviously change. And we then have the situation for the asset managers, which clearly are long overall. There's a bit of a dip in the long there, so maybe a, a little lack of interest in the recent couple of reports. This is um, actually the 7th of September, so it's a couple of weeks old um, in terms of updating. And the only reason that I haven't really updated this recently is in the last couple of weeks, we've actually had one of our members uh, create this particular form in bot form. So we've actually now got the commitment of traders um, bot um, comes out every Friday night exactly at 9.30, which is 3.30 in the US um, in terms of the release time. So actually, you know, live um, as soon as it's out. And we actually get this data now plotted left to right, um, which allows us then to see the information um, kind of as it should be, I guess. But ultimately, it's the same information and we've got that then plotted. So what we're looking at, like I said, for this is what are the asset managers doing longer term? And therefore, on the Bitcoin chart right now, we've got a little bit of a mess. We've got some decent long positions in orange behind. We've got some short positions there. So at the moment, we've got kind of a net positive um, momentum in terms of Bitcoin. So that would suggest the trend is overall up, but there's not really much of a gap between it at the moment. And it's still pretty heavy in terms of the short. So I think there's still a little bit of uncertainty in terms of the asset management class, although they have a little bias to the upside. You then have the leverage funds where the leverage funds are clearly selling off. Now, there's a couple of other ways to look at this. And I suppose, although the information is there and you can see the chart drop in both longs and shorts here, I think ultimately you're gonna see the cross. And once the cross comes in, you can kind of confirm using you know your Elliott moves and your Elliott tactics that the profit taking will take place when the short selling ultimately stops. So you have to think of the short selling crossover from the leverage fund situation as being a fourth wave three to four in Elliott terms, which will give you the profit taking. So this is what it is. I hope this clarifies a lot in terms of the COT information. And uh, obviously we go a little bit further in terms of the depth and how you use this in conjunction with things like Wyckoff and Elliot and so on within the Discord server. But uh, like I said, I hope this helps. So have a great weekend. Thank you for watching.